maybe I'm just playing a different version of these Like a Dragon spinoffs. Uh, somehow, somewhere, at some point, my copy gets switched out for a knockoff no one else has played. Hokuto Ga Gotoku is quite possibly one of the best Like a Dragon games they've ever made. I don't want to hyperbolize or embellish the truth about this one. Oh, who am I kidding? Of course I do. It's Ryuga Gotaku. Excess and exaggeration is their bread and butter. But I don't want you to grab a copy only to be disappointed in what you end up playing. Even though I streamed to a bunch of enthusiastic viewers who claimed to have loved playing it, observations I saw online had the opposite sentiment. Believe me, everything I heard about Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise was setting it up for failure. What I got was a top tier RGG Studio experience complete with new and engaging ideas using a recognizable IP without coming off as a sponsored tie-in title. Lost Paradise might not center around the regular cast of Like a Dragon characters, but it so strongly embodies everything Like a Dragon should be, I don't even want to call it a spin-off. What I want to do is make the case for Lost Paradise to be considered one of the greats, right up there with Yakuza 0. So just like with Dead Souls, here's a list of reasons why Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is a good time, and why you shouldn't skip it on your adventure through the RGG Studio lineup. Phenomenal combat mechanics, starting with combo-based heat moves. I could stop right here. This is the easiest sell of my life. For enthusiasts playing in order of release, Lost Paradise is an escape from both the Dragon Engine and the wonky context-sensitive heat moves in games made in it. Utilizing the far more robust engine they used to make Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kiwami was enough, but in Lost Paradise, heat moves are now finishers to your combo strings after putting your opponents into what's called Meridian Shock. I don't know if that's a Fist of the North Star thing, because I've never seen Fist of the North Star. I should probably read Fist of the North Star. Moving on, wearing your opponent's health down opens them up to a pressure point attack you can inflict with the circle button. This places them into various forms of paralysis and makes them susceptible to a heat move execution. The status ailment you inflict depends on how far along your combo you were before hitting circle. Each has a corresponding heat move with some variations depending on what buttons you're holding down or where an enemy is standing. And it feels so good. <laughs> Do you see what I see? Putting your opponents into Meridian Shock is a grab move. Heat activations are grabs. Because both heavy attacks and heat move activations are mapped to triangle in other RGG Studios titles, it's always been very easy to lose player agency in combat due to how heat moves are implemented. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally gone into a heat move I didn't want to do in Like a Dragon. Lost Paradise offers control of the flow of battle by combining heat move activations with grabs and making every heat move a decision the player has to forcibly make without the risk of interrupting other actions. And because they're combo based, heat moves are more easily accessible. Input the string you want, hit Meridian Shock, and there it is. The resulting combat scenario is seamless. Players can experiment with different combo strings to discover new heat moves without interrupting their own combo, and this builds their ability to perform more and more complex combos, hence improving the player's familiarity with combat in general. And don't worry, context-sensitive heat moves are still there, just as counters and parries to enemy attacks. An insta-kill move. A common complaint I've seen online about Lost Paradise is there's too many enemies with too much health. I'll go ahead and say it. They're wrong. While certain scenarios see you face off against tanky enemies like bosses or a new tier of enemy difficulty as you level up, it's almost impossible to find an enemy who takes too long to go down because Lost Paradise equips Kenshiro with an instant kill move. Hitting Circle a second time at the right moment during a Meridian Shock attack will instantly blow an enemy up. But if this were all it did, this wouldn't be an RGG Studios game. The insta-kill is also tied to your combos, resulting in enemies giving out an array of death cries. The specific death cry they give out can turn into power-ups like health or more heat energy. 
My favorite one is when the death cry solidifies into an actual object Kenshiro can swing around like a weapon for massive damage, something which comes into play during this game's secret boss fight. The insta-kill button is a welcome addition to Like a Dragon's action-based combat. It's perfect when facing enemies of varying strength, when you're surrounded and need to quickly reduce enemy attack opportunities, or when you run into weaker enemies and don't want to waste time with heat moves. It sells me on having one in mainline series titles, especially in long battles where instantly dispatching hordes of enemies would feel spectacular. A spin on the weapon system. Kenjiro is a master of Hokuto Shinken. Weapons aren't really his style. Lost Paradise swaps the weapon system out for an equipable talisman system instead. Talismans are a utility smorgasbord of effects. Some increase item drop rates, others activate unique heat moves or put Kenshiro into a combat state, and a few simply make prices at shops cheaper. Equipping sets of talismans which share a common theme bestows unique bonuses, and every talisman is upgradable in order to make it more powerful. They also have cooldowns to prevent you from spamming the heck out of them, but the real gameplay treasure here is something future action-based Like a Dragon games should use, swappable equipment sets. As Kenshiro gets stronger, players can unlock the ability to swap between talisman loadouts and do so even in the middle of a fight. This means even if you burn through all your currently equipped talismans, you can swap them out with the push of three buttons instead of having to navigate through your inventory like you would with weapons in other Ryuga Gotoku games. Combining talismans with combo-based heat actions and instant kills and sprinkling on top the brutal, gory executions of Kenshiro's Hokuto Shinken creates a fighting experience unlike anything else RGG Studios has made up to Lost Paradise's release. This fast-paced, in-your-face, race-against-your-own-personal-best beatdown time is so immensely satisfying as a fan of Yakuza's fights, not engaging with it would be doing a disservice to you. Yourself. If you're accustomed to grabbing enemies and pulling them towards objects on screen, the adjustment period might be a little awkward for you, but once it clicks, it clicks, and you'll be chomping at the bit to try out new combos and talisman combinations. A unique collection of play spots, some of which are better than their Yakuza counterparts. Let's get this out of the way. The rhythm game in Lost Paradise sucks. The music sucks, the note charts suck, it just sucks. But the rest of the play spots and minigame activities in Lost Paradise are incredibly fun. Bartending is played with the PlayStation 4 DualShock's motion controls, the batting minigame has been changed into a derby contest with satisfying home run animations, and the Club SAR game from Yakuza 0 returns with more mechanics focused on proper time management and watching your hostess's stamina levels. And in this one, you can kick people out by crushing their skulls between your fingers. <laughs> Security, please escort this cadaver to the front door. The Coliseum is back with a much needed duel mode where players can fight old bosses for extra rewards, bosses who will get stronger every time they are defeated. And thinking about it, I can't believe a Like a Dragon Coliseum hadn't added a boss rush mode to the in-game world before. This is the first time we're seeing it in this series. Play spots are usually our favorite time wasters, but in a condensed entry like Lost Paradise, they also become central hubs for many of its sub-stories. Serving folks at the bar will increase their familiarity with you. They'll open up about their woes and hardships, and Kenshiro being Kenshiro, you'll help them out of whatever mess they've gotten into. This club management sim is mission-based, and just like in previous iterations, includes a fun storyline from start to finish with one or two questionable moments. The arcade is constantly in need of new machines, and slowly but surely you flesh it out with new games to play. I know it sounds tedious, and for some of you, it might be, but it's hard to put down the minigames in Lost Paradise, so being rewarded with another sub-story for just playing the game feels nice. It means messing around in the city is exactly where Lost Paradise wants you to be. Except when it doesn't. Do you think... Do you think you could take shots off of Kenshiro's finger scar holes? Do you think that's like a party trick he does? I just, you know, I want to put my finger in them. 
そのユリアのトゥルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルル You know, if I see a hole, I want to put my finger in the hole. All right, there. I said it. <laughs> what? Never put my finger in a hole like that before. Well, I don't know what it feels like. All right, Jesus. There's gotta, it's gotta have like some kind of textile uniqueness to it. I want to know what it feels like to put my finger in that hole. Listen, I didn't think too far along what I was saying, but it doesn't change the fact that it's the truth. Open world driving? I respect the ambition to introduce new features into a well-established gameplay loop, even if the attempt is a little shoddy. But hey, when has an RGG Studios attempt at something new ever come without strings attached? Unique to Lost Paradise is the Wasteland, a big open expanse of sand Kenshiro can explore to find new hostesses for the club, treasures left behind by other wanderers, and deadly bandits looking to prey on the weak. But you're not walking through the hot, arid desert. Instead, wasteland adventuring is done behind the wheel of a big old customizable buggy. This thing can carry so many muscle-headed men. At first, the driving of Lost Paradise is going to feel underwhelming and inefficient. Your buggy is going to handle like the crazy taxi. It'll slip, it'll slide, it'll pick random moments to magnet itself to the ground or launch itself 50 feet into the air. One of life's greatest mysteries is understanding how the Lost Paradise car makes physics-based decisions. But over time, as you upgrade parts and participate in time trials and races against other drivers, you'll start to appreciate the crazy taxi comparison. No one is under the illusion the driving feels tight or responsive, least of all the people who built it from the ground up. You'll notice most of the environment compensates for the wild and out, slippery slidey feel driving around has. Even racetracks are often wide to allow greater room for error as you try to avoid explosive obstacles and debris left on the track to break down your vehicle. The name of the game is drifting, and once you get a nice angle on a long turn to boost your way onto a straightaway, the whole thing starts to feel a lot less haphazard and a lot more stylish, and true to the RGG Studios way. As your upgrades improve the stats of your buggy, you'll destroy rocks in your path, drive over quicksand, and access areas you previously couldn't. Areas with new merchants to barter with, harder enemies to fight, and rarer loot to find. Add a cycle of soundtracks from other Sega titles to listen to while you drift among the dunes, and driving in Lost Paradise turns out to be an enjoyable event you can't get in another Like a Dragon title. An opportunity to hear familiar actors perform new roles. Maybe it's just me, but ever since I started playing Yakuza, I've come to recognize the voices of the characters I've grown attached to. I can spot Akiyama's voice actor out of a lineup if need be. I'll know who it is when I start quivering. Now, typically in a Like a Dragon spin-off, the characters those voice actors are playing are also modeled after their mainline series counterparts. The personalities and performances aren't always one-to-one, -one, but it's not the same as giving those actors an opportunity to really deviate from what we know them for. It was neat to play the guessing game in Lost Paradise, wondering who was going to be cast as which character, though there are some obvious choices they went with. Gee, I wonder who's going to voice Jaggy. What a mystery. But even so, the stable of Yakuza voice actors bring different energy to their roles here, and it's a treat for any ardent fan of the series to hear the extent of their range. You'd think Kuroda would phone it in and do a carbon copy Kiryu voice, but he's noticeably a lot softer in his performance of Kenshiro. He's consistently warmer and a little more timid. Ugaki-san's performance is completely unhinged and a really good example of what sets his Majima apart from other wacky characters in recognizable media. <laughs> you can do this kind of analysis for every voice actor in Lost Paradise and come up with some interesting comparisons. 
or you can listen to the first RGG Studios game to ever get an English dub since the original Yakuza. And hey, judging from what I've peeped on YouTube, it sounds pretty good. Appropriately campy in places, knows when to sell the seriousness of a tense moment, what more could you ask for? I know this is less of a reason to play Lost Paradise and more of a reason to remember Lost Paradise, but for fans of Like a Dragon, this is the sort of stuff a lot of us are interested in seeing for ourselves. It's noteworthy enough to warrant further investigation by those invested in experiencing the growth of the series from one production to the next. It's not all rose-colored glasses, though. Uh, some people don't like Lost Paradise, and I think I know why. This game is a completionist's nightmare. If you're the type of person who's fine with doing as much as they can in Like a Dragon games without forcing themselves through hours of casino gambling or fighting Majima 50 times in one specific way, you're gonna be fine. For the rest of you who insist unlocking every skill node in the level up tree is essential gaming, I have some bad news. Lost Paradise's 100% completion run is god awful. The challenges you need to complete range from tediously visiting restaurants a hundred times, to painstakingly getting perfect rankings in all minigame tiers, to monotonously fighting Colosseum enemies and repeating the same hostess missions ad nauseum until you hit some wildly arbitrary numbers. This also includes completely upgrading the dune buggy, which means farming a lot of resources which spawn randomly out in the wastes or annoyingly barter for. And bartering for them would mean having to farm items of similar value anyway. Bad news for anyone who wants to max out Kenshiro's abilities, you don't earn enough plot level up orbs to advance down all the paths without playing through the main scenario twice. All in all, the completionists are going to despise Lost Paradise, but if you ask me, it's not so bad. There's a couple of exploits and cheesy mechanics to abuse in order to get over the game's only real hurdle towards the secret boss, having to amass 100 million yen in order to pay back an old woman for a broken urn. Look, my advice, get the key item that doubles your swinging power at the home run derby and S rank the final tier there for an item which sells for about 1.5 million. By the time you need to pay off the whole thing, it should only take about 10 S ranks to finish off whatever you owe. Maybe. But don't sweat it anyway, because the secret boss of Lost Paradise is exactly what you'd expect, and you're not missing out on much if you've done it in any other Yakuza game before. He turns into a giant in this one, but don't worry about it, you don't need to finish that game! How many times do I gotta tell you? The point is, if you're not trying to 100% Lost Paradise, you're not going to run into any hardcore grind fest, and it's probably for the best that you don't try to complete Lost Paradise in this way. It's honestly just another Yakuza game. And that's the best part! Lost Paradise brings so many new features and additions to the Like a Dragon formula. They feel like no-brainers, improvements, or novel ideas begging to be used in future RGG Studios games. Changes which feel like a further evolution of their work, which makes this specific spin-off title difficult not to recommend. Besides it being yet another Yakuza game with a different suit on. Because if you strip away the driving, and the Fist of the North Star license, and some of the adjustments made to combat, what you get from Lost Paradise is yet another iteration of the Yakuza formula. But what's so bad about having more Yakuza to play? If you ask me, it's what we ask for with every entry. More of the same, with changes made to the old we didn't like, and a little bit of new sprinkled on top. I almost didn't want to do a video on this one because I didn't think there'd be much to say. Oh, me of little faith. I suppose what Lost Paradise does show is Ryuga Gotoku Studios' ability to work with other licenses well, and how the typical format for a Like a Dragon title can work well in other IPs. Lost Paradise serves as a proof of concept for future licensed games, and really begs the question, what else would you like to see RGG Studios make a licensed game of? Personally, I think part 4 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a perfect fit. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments? That's right, we're doing calls to action now. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise was great, especially because I streamed it to a bunch of my viewers over on Twitch and we had a blast laughing with it and at it. I can't help but wonder if it impacted future RGG titles though. Ah, whatever. I'm sure that's a judgment call we can make at a later time.